Hello, SolarLoon here, and welcome to another uh, video of mine. Uh, this one's a little bit more exciting because this is a uh, announcement video of a project that I've been working on for the past couple days uh, called Tetra Term. So I'm the creator uh, of Tetra 3D, which is a 3D uh, software hardware renderer. Um, it basically allows you to make PlayStation 1 style games. So I'll make it show this little example here. Uh, so we have this cube, uh, or rather these cubes, uh, in this scene with a simple light off to the side. Uh, and so the, the top cu two cubes are parented to the bottom cube. So when the bottom one rotates, all of them rotate together. So it's a very simple scene. Um, and so, you know, this is the kind of style of game that you might, you know, expect to see out of the PlayStation 1 or out of Tetra 3D. It's uh, kind of similar in terms of uh, the vibe. But while you're making your game, you, you know, it's useful to have the terminal and, and there's a function to print out for example uh what the scene hierarchy looks like but when you're doing that you're like well you know i, I don't want to use up my terminal for the scene hierarchy so i can look at that and you know if the hierarchy is huge how do i you know really traverse it easily um and then i have other things i might need to print out like other you know errors or debug value values or whatever so what i did was i made a tool uh to call tetra term and that's what i I'm showing today so if we go over here to a new terminal uh, we type in tetra term it'll create this uh, application or it will start tetra term in the terminal and so we can see the uh, scene graph of our game it connects remotely uh, so you don't have to have uh, the game running in the same terminal or anything like that you can have the terminal on a, a, a different screen you can move it wherever you want uh, or it can be in vs code or whatever uh, ide you you use and so we can see some game properties at the bottom right corner and some node properties at the right, uh, up right, and then the node tree on the left. So we can click on these nodes to uh, collapse and, and expand them. Uh, or you can do it with uh, your keyboard. Either one's fine. Uh, you have the ability to move nodes around freely using uh, the W, A, S, D, Q, and E uh, keys. And you can also press the one key to show uh, what nodes you're, you're highlighting. Uh, so it's very, very useful, very useful for debugging. Uh, you can also duplicate nodes and move them around too. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of dope actually. It's kind of, it's kind of exciting. So we're moving the camera around. Uh, we can press R to reset where, where it is. So this is useful if you, for example, uh, you know, are testing out something like, uh, you know, uh, 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 uh <laughs> it's useful if you're for example testing out uh different positions for your camera you know when you're like playing the game you're like oh i don't want to have to program in moving the camera around while i'm playing the game you know this allows you to just freely and easily move the camera forward or back uh, as necessary you can also press uh, f to focus the camera on a position on an object which is very useful uh and then you can press r to reset it back to the original location same with everything else uh, you can uh, press Shift D to duplicate and Shift X to delete uh, nodes freely. Um, you can search for nodes in the node tree by pressing Shift and F. Uh, so we can search, for example, for camera, and it'll give us a nice little uh, autocomplete at the bottom there. You can see for cube, and there it is. You know, nice, simple autocomplete, and it'll highlight the the node in both the window, the game window, as well as in Tetra Term itself. Um, yeah, you can also clone nodes and add them to the scene. And the nodes you clone, and I'm, I press Shift C there, uh, the node you clone uh, doesn't even have to be in the scene. So, for example, if we clone it in this example that comes with Tetra Term, uh, we can type in, uh, yeah, Prism Diamond, and then it'll cl clone in this diamond uh, mesh, uh, which isn't in the scene. It wasn't in the scene before we cloned it in, uh, but we were, were able to reach it because it was in the same library. So when you export a, a scene or export a, a game uh, blend file with Tetra 3D, it becomes a GLTF file that is essentially a library. So you can have multiple scenes in Blender that becomes multiple scenes in um, a library in Tetra 3D. So you can pull and clone uh, any any node from any uh, scene in your library and put it into the scene you're, you're working with. So that's very useful because that allows you to, for example, put things like coins and, and enemies and you know different things like that, NPCs, whatever, into a assets scene. And then you can play your game, have your game level or maps, uh, and then just clone them in whenever you want. So that works pretty well. Um, yeah, it's kind of dope. You can press Control-H to get a little bit of a walkthrough. 
uh, with some keys and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, this was made with uh, um, T View uh, in Go. And terminals, you know, they're kind of they're kind of dope. There's something cool about a terminal. Uh, the terminals are just kind of cool. Uh, so I like I like terminals, you know. But at the same time, you know, you might be like, well, why didn't you just make this with you know something else that's a little bit more modern? Um, uh, and you know, that's definitely you know I, I could have. I definitely definitely could have. But the upside of this is that it's very lightweight. Uh, it's very cross-platform uh, compatible, you know, it, I could com compile or you can compile uh, Tetris 3D for different uh, operating systems. Uh, you should be able to do that without having to really, um, uh, what's the word, without having to uh, uh, actually have the, you know, source code running on the operating system, like cross-compatibility should be easy, uh, cross-platform building rather should be either easy. Uh, and it's pretty lightweight uh, by using this network system. Uh, and also, we can do this with any Tetra 3D game. It doesn't have to be something that's like, you know, really specifically made for it. All you have to do is make a uh, term server, a, ter a Tetra term server in your game, uh, create it, and then just call update and draw on it. And then uh, it'll hook in. So we'll run this, uh, this game that I've been working on, Air Drift, and Tetra term should automatically update. There we go. And now we're we're looking at that uh, node tree for for uh, air drift. Uh, so we can look through the scene tree, which is you know at this point it's pretty pretty thick, uh, pretty <laughs> a pretty a uh, pretty thick boy uh, scene tree, which is very useful to be able to examine it and you know look for things. So we can look for the player and be like, okay, where is he in the scene tree? Uh, it'd be nice if we could like collapse other things or hide other uh, other nodes that we're not looking at but that would be useful or, or dim them out or something. Uh, so there's definitely things to improve on and, and things to add, but the real like point of this and the real uh, advantage of this is to be able to like easily, uh, you know, do debugging and, and look at the node tree and, and move things around and stuff like that. So that's uh, very useful. For example, if we were playing the game, if we're testing out the game and it's like, oh snap, you know, we get into a position that's uh, not favorable, like, well, I just died, but <laughs> we get into a position that's not favorable. Like, let's say we go here, down here, and we're like, oh, well, uh, let's just move him back up. We can just hold E and just smush the player through the ground. Uh, you know, that kind of stuff where it's just super simple, super easy uh, to do de to do certain, you know, debugging things and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so it, it, it's working pretty well, uh, and I'm going to keep you know working on it and try to, like, make it... Uh, uh, you know, uh, trying to just keep building on it because it's kind of dope to be able to be like, you know, am I crazy or should this object not be visible? And then you, you can look at it, this and be like, okay, yeah, it's not visible. So I must be looking at something else. So it's like, it's very useful to be able to look at your your scene tree and to examine it. Uh, also to be able to get the game properties like the FPS, the TPS, uh, node count, drawn mesh parts, all that kind of stuff. It's useful, useful to be able to get that stuff without having to draw it on screen because uh, you may not have the real estate, the screen real estate, or, uh, you know, you, the screen is relatively low resolution, right? It's supposed to be PS1, so you can't draw that much text on screen. So it's useful to be able to uh, have that somewhere else and be able to move that around freely. And it's also useful to not have to, to use this. Like, you know, you, you don't have to use this uh, application. Uh, it gives you basically, you know, something like more of an IDE uh, or, or not an IDE, but more of a what a game engine would provide you for uh, a traditional game. It gives you that kind of ability, but you can also just not use it. It's not like you have to use it or it has to be on screen. Uh, so if you want to use pure code, you can. Uh, but if you don't, you know, you have this option as well. Um, there's currently an issue where uh, if this, if your game crashes or if your game closes, this will keep listening for another game and it will be kind of hard to close you'll have to kill the process um so i have to fix that that's not how it should work <laughs> basically uh but overall like I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy with uh tetra term in its current state it works and, and it feels pretty good you should be able to scroll up and down with the mouse wheel to scroll th through the no node tree for whatever reason i can't do that and i'm not sure why so i have to fix that and there's some other things to do on the uh, GitHub uh, repository for this. Uh, so you can check that out. 
Uh, but yes, it's open source, so please feel free to, to take a look. As for the game, Air Drifts, uh, just, you know, been making some minor, you know, improvements and stuff. Uh, mainly, I've been trying to fix up uh, Tetra 3D to run faster, so uh, I haven't done too much work on the game itself, but uh, I added this little switch so you can turn on and off different uh, different elements, different moving objects like this, so that's pretty cool. Um, and other stuff. Anyway, I won't get into the nitty gritty of that. I just, this is already uh, a 10 minute video. Let's not make it <laughs> longer. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you want to support development and, uh, you know, check out other things on my channel, please do. Uh, you can check out my Patreon if you feel like it. Uh, I also have Master Plan, which is a project planning software that's been going very well. I've been, oh no, it crashed. Why did it crash? Okay, well, I'll have to take a look at why it crashed. <laughs> All right, well, anyway... <laughs> Whoa, yo what okay uh anyway it's been real i'll catch you guys on the flip side next time and uh see ya